Okay, this will be start of our uh, May 10th Facilities and Transportation Committee meeting. I'll start by introducing myself, Kevin Strobel, in attendance. Kristen Thompson and Bucky, Bucky Scott. Okay, why don't we just go ahead and get started, Steve. Okay, um, like I said, there's not much on this list for this evening. Uh, there's no, no new items for purchase uh, or requests for approvals. Are you, is your mic on by chance? Yes, it is. Okay, there you go. Yep, it's better. Um, there's no new requests for purchasing this month uh, on any items. Uh, I hit you guys pretty hard last night. Last month, so we think we knocked a lot of stuff out that needed to be done. Uh, other things were previously approved that haven't been started yet because of the school year. Uh, waiting until the end of the year to uh, have some time in the buildings to do some, some work. Uh, so I handed out the uh, SSC civil work uh, uh, plans that were drawn up by Thomas from uh, Thomas Steen from SSC, who's doing this tonight. Um, did a really good job of laying it out. Um, I think you should have had Mr. Cooter come. He would have enjoyed the area this time of year, you know? Yeah. <laughs> He was here one day. I, I know. Okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so Thomas designed uh, designed basically the same thing I did last summer, giving out checklists, giving examples of checklists in that packet, what we're going to follow for the custodial staff in order to make uh, a deep clean of the buildings over the summertime. Um, obviously, we'll have to work that in with summer connections and other programs that are going on in the schools. So we'll kind of bend some of our work around those areas that, that uh, there's other work schedule or, or time schedule for summer connections or ESY. Um, so some of that is going to involve the deep cleaning of bathrooms, classrooms, admin offices, <coughs> guys, auditoriums, gymnasiums, hallways, entrances, um, everywhere. All, you know, every every aspect of the building. Um, we're going to be working on waxing and burnishing floors, um, bringing things up to a better standard of clean, uh, things we could not get fully accomplished last summer because of the contract start dates uh, in relation plus COVID and whatnot. So we're going to try and take it down a little deeper this summer and do a lot more hard cleaning in a lot of areas <coughs> that have not had a lot of good attention in the last five or ten years. L last year we had um, a staffing issue That's at correct. that point as well. Um, has that all been corrected? It, it has. It, it ebbs and flows. Um, the bottom line with that, we are still short people. How many? Um, right now, eight, but a lot of that can be accounted for with retirements, with the difficulty in hiring new people during this, this time. Eight out of how many? 29. There's two, uh, eight, eight out of 20? 29. Uh, 29. So we have 29, we're missing eight, or we want 29, and we have 21. We want 29, and we have 21. Have 21, okay. Um, but that adds and flows. We we'll bring new people in, other people will leave. Uh, it's also a very difficult time to hire people uh, for that uh, due to the fact of the economy and, and the fact that people can, you know, are staying on unemployment longer. So there's been some challenges there, and that's not just felt for custodial, uh, it's felt in grounds, it's felt for bus drivers, um, you know, all those types of jobs right now across the industries <coughs> are seeing the same thing. And I, and I agree, and it's a difficult time for everybody. It's not just this industry. That, that's a 25% deficit. Actually, it's a little bit more than that. And so, you know, sometimes I'm going to I'm going to be that guy and be greedy and say, you know, grab them from another place. You know what I mean? Because you're you're a big company, and I, I realize they want to make sure. And I think that you, again, from what I hear, they're doing a great job. You really are. I mean, I'm hearing a great amount of things. But when you're short staffed, it's it's almost it's hard hard to do the full job. Make sense? Yeah. Oh no, I absolutely yeah. agree. It's something that um, I worked with Thomas and Brian. Uh, some of the things we're trying to do is to do a little bit better of an outreach. Is uh, right. We're going to redo our uh, our uh, transportation custodial maintenance website on the district um, with, to provide links for people to apply. Um, I get a lot of cold calls from people that want or are looking for jobs within the district. So this will make it easier for them to link over to SSC or to Alters or to find new roads and get you know jobs or positions with them that way. Um, I know that on SSC's part, they are it is on Indeed constantly, um, and they have had several hiring fairs to try to bring you know employment fairs to bring people on. So 
know that they're making the attempt to do it. Um, Thomas and I have had discussions. Brian and I have had discussions uh, about ways to outreach and get more people in here. Um, they know the tasks that they're going to be assigned this summer. Uh, we've looked at them, so I don't expect uh, a problem. Right. But that is currently where we're. Like I said, it, it, you've been reporting good things, so I get it. It's one of the things that just kind of. I mean, the level of clean is far better than it was under the previous contractor. Right. From what I understand and from what I see. Um, they're very attentive, they're responsive. Uh, Thomas does an excellent job communicating with all of the stakeholders of the building and districts. Um, so I, I have nothing negative to say about the work ethic or the management of SSC. However, there is an impact shortage. So, right. And they understand that. I'm sorry, I mean to take us off there. Oh, that's okay, that's fine. Um, <coughs> uh, some of the other things that have already had to done is Thomas just recently had a uh, training with all the staff on how to wax floors, um, getting them all on the same page about the level of clean and the standards for which we're looking for. Um, that's been excellent. Uh, they will be modifying work hours during the summer, so they'll work four tens, uh, basically. Uh, it's just a lot easier. It's also good for the district, too, because I can take down the buildings to a lower level of HVAC and electricity for that Friday. It's better for them, too. I mean, it's right. easier to get an employee when you give them three days off versus exactly. just, that's, a, that's a perk. It's a, a, a no-cost perk. Right. So it reduces the cost on the district as well when there's not people here Fridays. On Fridays, I will still be here. Um, we will still have maintenance personnel in the building. They're not going to modify their schedules. And there will still be grounds people here because they have to stay on schedule with cutting grass. So if there's any issues on those Fridays, we'll still take care of them. Um, as far as the maintenance and grounds work for the summer, there is a ton of project work out there that we have to do. A lot of the stuff that we discussed at the last meeting in the Cripples Issues list, it's already in the you know, already started. Um, the brown water issue at the high school, which will be beginning in will be beginning in June. I got a little tongue twisted there. Uh, some of the other work, the IC wall stabilization. Um, the engineer was out Saturday. Uh, took the measurements, was doing uh, some testing of the walls, uh, looking at the brick style, trying to match up what we have, and then they're in process to develop a work plan uh, that we can put out the bid to get that accomplished, hopefully, over the summer. I don't know how bad it is yet, extent-wise. How you much say IEC? I'm sorry, sir. IEC? At the uh, DBAIC, the uh, Intermediate Center. Uh, intermediate Center, okay. So, They've already started on that Saturday. So we're looking for feedback from the engineer on what the recommendations will be and what the cost involves so we can get a better idea <coughs> of the district. Um, some of the other things we'll be doing this summer include through the, the pond up here, doing the investigation on that, the stadium work, um, the dishwasher replacement at the high school, uh, backflow testing, fire system testing, um, emergency generator testing. Uh, we'll be doing paint work. In hallways, uh, cafeteria, I have uh, some kids coming in in this week program. I'm going to have them doing some paint work in the high school cafeteria and the uh, high school kitchen and some of the other areas throughout the buildings. Uh, those two are, are in really in need of repaying, so we're going to try to address those first. Um, we'll also be looking at uh, some paint work in hallways. If we want to do a storage from clean out and organization in all the buildings. Uh, floor replacement in high school room 209. Uh, that room was a technology loop room uh, when it was originally designed back in the 90s. And it has a lot of outlets uh, that have become nothing but trip hazards. There's like 26 outlets that come up with the floor. So we're going to need to do some flooring work in there, uh, fill that up. So we're going to work on that this summer. Um, we're going to do some additional lines for security at the PC in some of the rooms. Uh, a lot of the rooms there. <coughs> Their windows are ground level, right with the playground, so they're kind of a security risk because teachers can't darken those windows if there is a threat. So we're going to be doing some of that work. Uh, we'll support the BTC closure for sale. Um, that I don't expect too much work from, but there will be a couple, uh, quite a few days where we'll have to go over there. Plus, I agree, that I believe the district agreed to us giving them a couple of days worth of support in, in with that sale. Uh, we're going to be doing lighting replacements at parking lots and buildings, uh, auditoriums, classrooms, everywhere across the district. 
um, switching over to LEDs were possible to save money and to provide a better system with less time to replace. Um, I have a question about the LEDs. Um, um, when you buy in bulk, it's way cheaper. Yep. It's just more expensive because you're outlaying all the money at one time. Um, how's that going to work with doing the replacements? What kind of a return on investment decrease do we see doing them one at a time versus? Yeah. And, and again, I'm not looking to do them all at one time. It's a massive undertaking. What we've been doing is uh, generally we'll work with Barnett Stockwise, which is who we have for our uh, stock and replacement here, which is Division of Home Depot now. Um, they seem to be giving us the best prices. We try to order them in like bulk quantities. Um, but the pricing has come down substantially from where it was even two years ago. Right. So it's not, it, I think you're still getting the savings when you buy in bulk. We try to buy as many as we can. Okay. But at the same time, we don't want to store too many. Not so at all. We're in that. When it comes to parking lot lights, we actually got a pretty good deal from Trump Electric um, that we were able to take advantage of. So we have most of those materials. Every, every year they come down, you're right. So yeah, they're not as, as pricey as they used to be. Right. Get replacement. In fact, you know, when you go over the counter and you look just in a, in a store, I'll use Home Depot as an example, your, your pricing per an incandescent versus an LED is, is relatively the same. I agree. Um, you're seeing, not seeing much savings on the purchase before, or much more cost on the LED side, which results in savings for the district as well. It's, it's the fixture, though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're also going to be doing our bleach repairs and inspection. And we're going to do all those. Uh, we already ordered all the uh, uh, sections, the seating sections for the middle school, and they should be coming in shortly. So we'll be able to replace all of those. I think it was a, I think it was a total of almost 70 that need to be replaced there. Uh, so we'll do that, um, which will take a good amount of time. That's like a week's worth of work. I'm not sure if it was last year, Julie. Do you remember? Was it last year or the year before we had the whole stadium looked at? And we had to do some replacements as part of that. I think that was two was years it, ago. Was it two years already? Okay. Yeah. Because I knew the student body smashed one of them down, and jumped up and down. And, you know, and, and the thing that is looking at our operation um, as a whole, I mean, we've, we've come a long way in the last year. There are a lot of other things that I could have put on here for maintenance and grounds to do over the summer, but there's a lot of work that has been not pushed off, but it's been delayed until we can have the time in the buildings without the students here to. It's been very unpredictable this year in, in how our workflow has been. Right. Um, and there's, you know, so much going on. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking over the summer, we'll come out of it a lot healthier, maintenance-wise. Um, you know, we completed this this month, one of the things I was going to bring up, but this month we did our, uh, our service for HVAC systems, our filter changes. Uh, we're doing them every 90 days in all buildings. Uh, with COVID and stuff, and uh, they started at the beginning of the week. They were finished almost completely <clears throat> all four buildings by the end of the week. With some of the changes in terms of like surface, they, they now know that you can't get it uh, touching something. And so that that's ch changing ever so often. Is there a time where they're going to be able to back that, that filter changes can be very expensive every 90 days? Yeah. Is there is there anything on the horizon here soon that maybe we can go Six months instead of three months, or four months instead. Of, I, I don't know. It's a, it's more of a question because you know. We, the, we have looked like I've I've dealt with I've talked with actually a few companies about other systems that can be put into play uh, for COVID related systems. A lot of them are pushing UV lighting. Um, increasing the airflow is the key, is what everyone's saying to me. Um, the better air turnover rate, the changeover rate, obviously the better in the building. So we've been doing them every 90 days. Um, it's not really required to do them that often, okay. but with COVID, I figured it's working. It, it's working. We've been good, so it's just, it was more of a question. I didn't know if it was standard, if it was a mandatory thing. Okay. So they were just changed this month uh, at the end of April. So we would hope to do them again prior to school start. Uh, you know, obviously before we kick off the new school year. But uh, yeah, I was very impressed with that. Jason and Colin got that done quick and they did a good job and uh, so that's good um, that's pretty much it grounds work we have a few trees that need to come down uh, one is at the river rock building near the cemetery it's uh, quite old and it's in bad shape <coughs> uh, 
There was another one at the primary center. They just took a branch down. It was pretty large. It protruded over the fence coming from the, down along the driveway uh, behind the loading dock area. And there was two down here uh, at the high school that had to come down. Um, they're leaning over a person's property as they're on our property, so they're going to have to come down. Um, but other than that, with grounds, it'll be pretty much the normal operations this summer. Grass cutting. I don't foresee a lot of expense. Uh, you know, we'll do, we'll have a little bit of an expense there when it comes to the setup for graduation. Um, we do have prom this week uh, on Friday, so we'll, we'll spend a little bit of money there, but it's not going to be that much uh, to get that set up. Um, so I don't really foresee a lot of ground work over the summer that really necessarily needs to be done other than the normal work. Grass cutting, we, you know, trimming and all that stuff. Uh, transportation, uh, we've already started the rollover for the 21-22 school year, believe it or not. Um, so I'm actually building the database uh, and have been for about the last few days. So, well, not the last few days, but last week uh, I was building it. It should be ready to be turned over to the transportation companies um, by the end of this week uh, for them to start routing. Um, our goal is to try to have the 21-22 school year completed with the exception of non-public schools and uh, kindergartners by the end of June. Um, and then we'll work on kindergartners and non-public schools. We usually don't get 372 forms, which are the forms that parents fill out uh, for students attending a non-public school until we get to the deadline of June 30th, which means I probably won't get them all until mid-July. Um, so we'll get that worked in and get that set up. So we should be, we should not have the problems we had last fall with transportation. Um, a lot of that could be attributed to computer problems. It could be attributed to, you know, my own not knowing <laughs> exactly where we were going, um, you know, my first time out. So, you know, we will make a better swing into this school year uh, with transportation. And it should be a little bit easier too because Diane Winter has been helping me. She's also learning the system. Uh, so she understands what needs to be done. And she should be able to go to full training sometime in July uh, to bring her up to speed um, with routing software and all the other stuff that we do <coughs> on a normal basis. Um, uh, we are also in the process of creating a new share drive. There, so it will be on a Google Drive that the school district uses. Uh, there will be one for the district, and then one we'll share with our partners in transportation. So the district one, when I envision that one, that will be uh, homeless transport and information regarding students that we usually don't share outside of the district office. Uh, some of our planning, budgeting, um, and those kinds of items in that file. We'll also have intake paperwork, kindergarten registration forms, all the forms that we use in transportation. And then the one we share with the transportation companies will be the information that we get on a regular basis, which is mileage sheets, discipline folders, um, and stuff that comes back from the transportation companies uh, to us. Diane and I have been working on that in and out. Um, she's primarily been setting it up, um, and she's been working on <coughs> the calendars input into our transfinder system. Um, so it's going along pretty nice. We're, what we're trying to do is move away from the paperwork and you know move more onto an online program, but also be able to share with our partners so that they can see everything that we can see that's necessary to do the transport work uh, that we do every day. Is so, this something that you do through um, technology as well? Because setting up permissions on the drives can be very, um, um, there's a lot of liability sitting there with the wrong push of a button. So is that something that we go through with them? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So you can invite certain people to view. <clears throat> um, oh, this so is Google Docs then? Yeah, it's Okay, that makes, it, that makes it a little bit easier, I'm sorry. Yeah, so <laughs> unless we give you permission to view it, you, can, I get, no. you can't see the folder. And then the yeah. one that's for the district would only be viewable by... It's uh, very user-friendly. I was thinking you a share drive like... Sure. Right. I'm, I'm thinking so. Okay, I'm good. We're trying to get away from the paperwork trail. Oh, yeah. What happens is parents fill out transportation request paperwork, um, and the, the, the few people that see it is usually 
you know, if it's a kindergarten registration, the register will see it, the building principal will see it, maybe the building secretary and myself. Um, when this stuff's in this folder, it can be uploaded a lot quicker. Uh, we ran into that problem last summer too because there was a lot of confusion on who handles what paperwork and, you know, the change of personnel. So this will make it easier for everyone to be able to see. This Makes you wonder if, if Infinite Campus can't handle some of that integration too. With all the online integration that's going on now, well, that's another thing. That's already in process too with Infinite Campus. Yeah. So, um, Diane, the way it's set up now is so kids who register for the 20, 20, 21 to twenty two school year for kindergarten, and I believe we're up to at last count we were about one hundred and fifty so far. Right. I can see their applications. Infinite Campus notifies me when a student is registered, the parents are able to do it online. Um, there's been some recent improvements to Infinite Campus. They're talking, it's talking a lot better with TransFinder, which was a major problem as well. And also now Infinite Campus is capable of displaying two different routings. So if a student has a regular route and they have a daycare, the parent will be able to see that when they go into the room. So if we have a child that may attend you know, the PC, but also goes to live and learn, the parent would be able to see both of those drops um, in there now, which will make a lot less phone calls and a lot less problems for parents. And that's a big issue, you know, especially K for five. Sure. Um, not so much for the older kids, but right. for the younger kids. So that, that's positive too. Um, other than that, ongoing projects we're working on, uh, we're installing the fence up front for the courtyard. Uh, they should have the gate installed by Friday. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of grounds work inside there to kind of clean that up a little bit when we're finished. Um, they just installed the, uh, the new expansion tank that the board approved last month was just installed over here. The garbage disposal has come in. The new uh, door handles have come in that were all approved in April. Um, we're waiting on the intercal seating. Uh, but pretty much other than that, it's been day-to-day -day maintenance stuff in preparation for the prom, graduation, and all the other stuff that's coming up uh, with the end of school year uh, work. Uh, like I said, I don't have anything for request for purchase this month, which is a positive, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure Kathleen will appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, anybody yes. have any questions? Does anybody have any questions or anything I can answer? I, I have a question. I, Full disclosure, I'm late. Um, so if you mentioned this already, that's, I'm sorry about that. Um, we had talked earlier about um, doing some investigation about um, what we can do to fix the paving stones underneath the uh, underneath the yeah the snack bar. Um, and you had mentioned just you know the general like outside stuff as we had discussed. Is that still part of the plan for doing this summer? Yes, ma'am. Um, now, I wasn't, it's good you mentioned that because I actually forgot about this. Would anybody be opposed to us concreting that? No. There Con is, um, is this outside the snack bar? Yeah. Um, uh, if somebody, <laughs> I, I don't speak for everybody. Of course, I am not a general contractor. So if somebody does have an objection, you should let Steve know. But um, there are, there is access to electrical under there. There is a there's a pull up thing. So so you, you kind of have to take a look at the blueprints to see if the sure. concreting would create issues. I guess that's the and and as we've talked about before, some of the um, lines cross right through there to get to the bathrooms. Some of the water lines. Oh, uh, okay, understood. Um, so that makes sense to me why they want the papers and all. Yeah, so so you put, you know probably want to look into that, um, you know as to why it wasn't done, but I wouldn't object. I think it would be better, but but I mean, what do I know? Obviously. No, I, I I agree with you. I would like to see a concrete in there. It's much cheaper to maintain. It lasts a lot longer. It's a stronger. Um, you don't have to worry about sinking or anything like that. I did do some investigation on the old fry shack. Um, that building will need a roof. That, that shed yeah. the roof at least. I mean, looking at it, I mean, maybe. Did, have you gone in there? Like, briefly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, needed a, <laughs> it needed a roof two years ago. Yeah, we, we were in there. They were going to rip it off and put a whole new roof on. 
that, that was it, the it idea, right? New roof. Yeah. And I think some of the beams are rotted. They are. They weren't ripped the whole thing. I mean, it's we're talking about two by sixes. So yeah, they were, if they're going to use it as storage, you wouldn't have to have like a roof with like actual like um, like full exhaust like it has now, obviously. But um, <coughs> that's, that's a I guess that's a bigger conversation. Um, you can just you can just tarp it for a year. You can you can always cut exhaust in later if you yeah. need it. If it would ever turn yeah. into it, you could always cut exhaust in later. But just it, they were just literally going to put a roof on it for I think it was two thousand bucks. Um, I, I don't remember what it was at twenty five hundred maybe. But you know then it was going to help protect whatever they were storing too. They, I think they were Correct. storing some hurdles and some other stuff. Yeah. But we but just didn't want to tear the building down because I mean. It makes no sense to tear it down. But it's a, it's a stone building. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, even if, like you said, even if you're just storing stuff in there to keep, the, keep it out of the weather, it yeah. probably would be worth it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It was a roof. Don't have a problem. And it still has to be, you know, if, the, if we ever had a roof that was useful, you know, there is, there's electric to it, so you, I think you've got, you've got lights to turn on to, like, be able to find a way around it. I don't, I don't have all the minutes from back then. I'm pretty certain we already approved that. But we, I mean, if we can, we can bring yeah, it back up, I think it should be brought back. back up now, obviously. But I mean, back in the day, we, we all said, let's go with yeah, that. The other, yeah, right, it was pre COVID. Yeah. The other question I had is, um, like, with that concrete, how wide is it? I mean, can you just put, like, a, can you put a chase pipe big enough in? If we have a plumbing issue, you can do it later. I mean, you can put like, a chase pipe in. I mean, they don't have yeah, to. Yeah, there's be, like, I think, I think it's like three feet most of the, the, on, on the sides. and like you said, maybe 15 by 20 at the front. Does that sound about right? That would need to be concreted. I'm just saying um, where, the, where the electricity and the plumbing are, can we put a chase pipe in nearby? And so if you have to go underneath of it, it's already there. I mean, I don't know, it's just a thought. If you really wanted the concrete, I don't, if it costs more to put the pipe in than it would be, and the concrete than it would be to do the pavers, it's not worth it, I agree. Yeah. But, I can cost it out both ways, okay. as you guys decide. Yeah, we could probably reduce the the um, the instance of like we're pretty sure at least some of the initial like caving in of the pavers that are there um, were due to um, animal. It, you know, I don't think that's all of it, but I think that's where it started, and that would be resolved if it were concrete. Are you still taking the fry machine outside and all yep. that? Yep. Yeah, the buildings would can't. I know. I agree. That was pretty bad by the one day we went in there. <laughs> <laughs> they had the they had the side of it glowing or something like that. It yeah. was glowing. They had it so hot with oil. It's <laughs> not one good. One thing I did notice, I was just down there last week. Uh, the Daniel Boone Area School District sign that's on the stadium wall below where the concession stand is facing, I guess, west. Is totally dilapidated. Well, I thought that that was coming down when they do the when they when they increase the size of the when they were fixing the track. I thought you the thought <coughs> that you were going to have an is that is that part of that? Well, I, was, I thought it was. So you might want to double check with um, the AD, but um, I thought that because because I have noticed the same thing for the last two years. But I thought when we extended the size of the track, the track lead in, I thought we were going to because we have to fix that part hard turn, right? I thought that that's why I didn't care because it, I thought it was just going to go away. Now I could, but double check, please. I haven't been involved with that with okay. the turf uh, project much. Okay. Um, but uh, to your question, I'll, I'll talk to Eileen about it and see where that's at. I know that there was some work involved on both ends. One was the lead-in for um, for the for the start the distance race, start finish the yeah. start the start gun race and then there was going to be some uh, <clears throat> some things happening at that end to fix that turn Understood. and I thought that we were going to cut right into that a little bit and um, if we were I just was going to suggest that we put the money out please yes it looks horrible oh and, yeah you know I don't want you know I just see it I'm like it's driving me crazy every time I guess you know, yeah so. we'll be going to Dan Oon. Yeah, Dan Oon. High school. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're not removable letters where they can move them and yeah, spell things. Right. <laughs> that's, that's all I had for the board. Uh, <clears throat> I have anything else? 
Um, I do have a question. There's a greenhouse over here. Is that the greenhouse that was over in the middle school that was I'm brought not up? Sure. There's a greenhouse in the, in the in the area over here. I just I think it's uh, great. But I, I thought there was still a greenhouse. There's um, there's been a greenhouse at the high school for quite a while. So oh, that's from it's been there for a while. It's been there for a while. Yeah, uh, they, okay. um, the green team used to use it for um, pretty serious stuff. For I've never seen it before. Thought maybe it was the one that was at the other building that never got installed. That that one is still crazy. Right. Anyway, okay. No, no. Okay. <laughs> that concludes our. Sell it. <laughs> right, we should. That concludes our facilities and transportation meeting for May 10th.